I'm Jackie Doucette, and I'm on a mission to discover exactly what life is like beyond retirement. Join me while I chat with people who've already done it, who've retired to something rather than from something. Let's find out together exactly what's waiting for us when we say goodbye to that nine to five. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Retirement. Today, I'm joined by Mikhail Stavitsky. <laughs> Stavitsky. I'll get it right someday. Very good. Uh, <laughs> Mikhail is nicknamed Mr. Consistency, and he's a best-selling author in the personal development field. He's obsessed with changing the world through daily habits, starting with his own habits and his world. Mikhail preaches and practices consistent daily action, and he, believe, he believes that this is the means to achieve success in any area of life, from parenting to business. So, Mikhail, thank you for joining me today. Uh, you're most welcome, Jackie. Uh, thank you for having me. So, generally what I do, I ask people to talk a little bit about their history, how they ended up doing the things that they're doing today, because usually people don't start off in the same uh, general direction that they end up. And I have a feeling that uh, you probably didn't start off with consistency and daily habits, because most, uh, most people don't. Well, we are the creatures of habit, so uh, maybe they just don't realize. But up to 33 years of my life, I was following the standard path. You know, uh, marriage, kids, college, day job. And I felt miserable. Like, everything was okay-ish. Like, my health was okay. Uh, I had a family the salary wasn't bad and so on but I just had this feeling that I'm not uh, acting up to my potential uh, and it, that, that was one thing what, which was very frustrating the other was that well I was very self-critical uh, full of self-doubts so I just <clears throat> talked myself out of most attempts to to improve my life and sometimes when i don't didn't like i remember the episode with investing in in the stock market and losing uh, savings then i beat it myself to the pulp so uh, that that was my situation at the age of 33 and then i read a book the slight edge by jeff olson which preaches the message of Jim Rohn. Success is a few simple disciplines repeated over time. And failure is a few uh, small error in judgment repeated over time. Right. And up till that moment, I thought, okay, so success is something huge, like got the medal at Olympics, so I'm not even able. I didn't uh, try it. Didn't try. And then after reading the book, like it took me a month and some just to grapple with the message, could it be so simple? Uh, but finally, I started. I set some goals and then uh, f- figure it out daily disciplines that would inch me toward those goals. And after a month, I was hooked. And after a few months, I was like fully convinced that this is working and I just need to keep going. Even in the areas I had like zero faith, I can uh, do anything. I remember about uh, thinking of my family economic situation. Uh, Okay, I I need much more money. So to do that, well, uh, working for somebody else is not the greatest way. Uh, so start a business, but how? I had no clue. So I was, mm. I couldn't see myself owning a business and making money on my own. It was impossible for me, like uh, flapping your arms and, and flying to the moon. Come on, it, it's just flatly impossible. But I kept going with my small daily disciplines, kept learning, studied uh, personal development. Because I feel me believed also in the another message of Jim Rohn that income seldom exceeds your personal development. So I didn't know how to start a business, but 
I did know how to develop myself. So this is what I was focused. And I published my first book around eight months since uh, reading the slight edge. And then somebody who didn't know me purchased the book. They paid one dollar to read my Kindle book. And yeah, I was hooked. The rest is history. <laughs> And you say you were hooked. Uh, you've definitely written a lot of books since then. There's a yeah, I have 19 out there and uh, a lot of content, free content on Medium and Quora.com as well. So you talk about um, doing these little daily disciplines that, that you know, work their way up. I, I've talked on a couple of different shows about... Uh, about the slight edge actually and and about different concepts that are related to the same thing how you know just small daily changes make such a big difference either either good or bad how do you keep yourself on track to do those small daily things i i know they're little but you've got to keep focused somehow on on what the outcome is going to be or else you just it's human nature to just say well you know why bother and go back to those other little things that are taking you the wrong way uh, well, for me, it's. I also uh, am fan of uh, another concept of Jim Rohn, which is personal philosophy. And we all have some kind of personal philosophy. It was shaped by our experiences, but whatever they taught us in, in the school, in our family, and so on. But the thing is that as a human being, you can shape your own personal philosophy and like I have at least several daily disciplines to keep myself on, on track really just just this I watch my vision board I read uh, the random uh, quotes from from the file where I collected those which inspired me I repeat my personal mission statement every day so I keep my uh, mind on those on the philosophy yeah? and in not in a nutshell this is the slight edge philosophy which is yes yeah, small things uh, do matter and they make uh, a lot of difference in the long term so that's why i suppose my friends nickname me mr consistency because i have much less trouble with consistency uh, i don't mind doing small things today and not seeing the results because it has been my experience. Now it's been a decade. So, and like I have 19 books out there. I have uh, several coaching clients, accountability clients. Uh, I have a book advertising business, which I started a few years ago. Uh, it's all working. And I could uh, enumerate a lot of achievements from. Uh, the, the past decade so i don't need to you know to just blindly believe this is my experience but at the beginning yes it was exactly that it was just feeding my mind okay this is true this works it's like a law of nature because it is so for for your um for your business you're working primarily with people who are um business people do you have uh people who for lack of a better thing aren't doing something like people who are either employees or people who are retired in the case of the, uh, the listeners yeah. here how would this um how could this be uh attributed to them how could it be uh, used by them well um like the slight touch is very universal i I firmly believe it's a law of nature. So just time, you leverage time, and time is universal thing like gravity, and you can use it in every area. So for your health, for your relationships, for your spiritual health. So whatever is your focus, uh, is your goal, you can break it down uh, to daily actions and then just repeat them again and again and again and again every single day. Um, you ask me, okay, how I keep doing, how I keep the track. Well, I'm very fond of 
using other people for that. And I think it's also very universal. We are social uh, animals. So I have daily accountability partner. Every morning we call each other and tell, okay, what we'll do this day and uh, challenge each other. So this daily action would be meaningful in the long term. Yeah, It's not just being busy for the sake of being busy. Uh, but you are asking how it is, it is applicable for common people. Well, when I started, I was absolutely normal. I had a day job, mortgage to pay off, three kids, uh, was charge committee member. Uh, I neglected my personal development for like a lot of years, like 14, 15. And I sat down and in 15 minutes, I figure out, okay, several goals for each of the main areas of my life. Yeah, I wanted to uh, have better health, uh, spirituality, better relationships, uh, better finances, and so on. I figure out something. Then I, of, I was in my situation, and you are the best person in the world to assess your own situation. Okay, so if I want to lose weight, what can I do every day to achieve uh, that outcome? And that's just the plan. Of course, it will be modified along the way, but it's a start. And like the main thing to remember when you are breaking those big goals into daily actions is to keep the daily action easy, at least easy in your mind. Yeah. Uh, for example, at that time, I was doing quite a lot of push-ups. That was my daily fitness routine. And I added pull-ups to it. Yeah? So for most of people, it's like beyond the uh, abilities yeah? to, to do 100 push-ups, not to mention then uh, jump on the uh, bar and, and do 20 pull-ups. But you are in your situation and you know what's possible for you. Keep it easy. For me, it was easy, seriously. Uh, but that was my easy. Uh, relatively easy was also like, uh, I thought, okay, how can I make more money? I have no clue. But I was database administrator at that time. So, well, I will study database documentation for 10 minutes a day. I didn't like it very much, but 10 minutes a day, well, in my mind, okay, I could do practically every, anything in, uh, 10, for 10 minutes uh, at a time. So I did that, and despite the fact I didn't like it very much in a year or maybe two, max two years, it translated into me uh, passing some uh, professional exams, getting certificates and a better job. Uh, so I didn't think of writing books because back then in September 2012, I didn't even... Uh, I wasn't even aware that I want to be a writer. Yeah. So I couldn't set such a goal. It's all iterative. So I guess the bottom line, one one of the things that you said a little bit earlier was you think about your your mission statement to guide you through the day. I think generally speaking, you know, Joe Blow off the street doesn't look at his life or think about his life and say, I have a mission statement. They just no, they're going through their life. They're doing things. And um, actually, on your on your website, expand beyond yourself. I I read a little bit, and I thought that was it was really interesting. Um, where it talks about uh, stagnation and and just staying where you are, where you know you're you've got a roof over your head, you've got a job, you've got family, everything is okay, but life isn't going anywhere. And I think that a lot of people, most people, are in that position. Um, how do you help them? Do people come to you because they're dissatisfied or do people come to you um, thinking maybe you can help them be better at something without being dissatisfied with their life first? I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, both ways are uh, happening. Like some people just feel, okay, like I like you just talk over okay there is this life and me before 53 
the life was okay-ish, but I just wasn't satisfied. And I had a feedback from one of my readers that she read my book about uh, crafting your own personal mission statement. And it was the first book she read in 20 years. And it like took her out of, out of this miserable life because she was living for others. She was stuck in the past. Like the kids were grown ups. Like she didn't really know what to do with her life. And it really, the, the book uh, highlighted to her that it's her life and she's in charge uh, of actually figuring out what I'm fond of. And uh, I also listened to, to your podcast a couple of last episodes and one of the guests said that, well, or, or that was maybe even you, Jackie, that uh, you don't need to, to know for sure. Like I started, I didn't even know I want to write books. It, because I immersed myself in this process of creating personal mission statement, examining my own desires, dreams, uh, I, I rediscovered uh, my passion for writing. But at the very beginning, I had no clue. But you need to start where you are and then, okay, try new things, like be mindful of how it works. Often we are much better at, okay, I don't know what I don't want, but it steers you toward, okay, what you want. Yeah. So I didn't want to live from paycheck to paycheck, which was happening for years. Uh, okay. So that mean that meant I need some, uh, uh, spectrum of financial independence and I concluded okay I need my own business that was my conclusion your conclusion may be different uh, but as I said you are the expert of your situation but I would say the clue the, the key is to be mindful and reflective reflective nothing will happen on its own or if it will that's providence and good for you but normally, no, it doesn't. Normally, it's what I've done. I've been doing those small exercises, mental exercises, or uh, answering to those like big life questions, what I am here for, what I want to be remembered for. And then writing everything down. It took me well over a month before I crafted my personal mission statement. But I was mindful. I was focused on this bigger picture. And I guess the, the key there, in order to even want a mission statement or to, to want to know what you're here for, you've got to decide that what you're doing, what your life is, isn't enough. Um, if, yeah. if you're happy with it the way it is, you're not going to want to change. Okay, but I have also one story about habits. In The Power of Habits, uh, Charles Duhigg wrote about this scientific research. They wanted to discover why people change their lives. And when, at the beginning, the uh, hypothesis were, of course, there's some big event, uh, someone dies in your family, or you are getting married, or changing jobs, or whatever else. But they found out that usually it was just a small single habit that started the avalanche of change. And they called them keystone habits. The two mentioned in the book are uh, physical activity and healthy eating. And I would say it is a good place to start because in 2006, I went back to my push-ups uh, habit still being normal with kids day job and so on but this habit really uh, practiced over six years prepared me for the message of the slight edge then i could look at my push-ups performance and yeah clearly this is it uh, it was small daily discipline and now i'm stronger i can do like three times more push-ups it works. Uh, so I could, it, it gave me this needed push to, uh, okay, even think of changing my whole life or maybe improving several areas at, at one time. So 
yes, small habits, it's a good place to start changing your life. And I think probably anyone can think of something about their life that they wish was a little bit different. And you can probably find some small action to take that's going to change that. So I think, I think that, that kind of applies to everybody relatively easily, <clears throat> even if it's something as simple as um, I eat too many bags of cookies in a week, you can, you know, start, you know, start eating a couple of carrots instead or an apple or something. Yeah. So in your, um, in your matchmaker profile, you describe, describe yourself as a crusader against quiet desperation. So can you talk a little bit about what that means to you? Yeah, I will. I won't butcher really this uh, uh, quote from uh, about quiet desperation, but yeah. uh, I don't remember it uh, very well. But it's about this, like most people live in quiet desperation, like I lived before my transformation. So our own programming keeps us down in our lives however they are whatever they are sometimes it's very uh very sad like the lives we are continuing full of abuse and and torment and so on just because in our minds there is nothing more for us and but it's even like worse in case when you are in this golden cage because if you are in pain uh, when you are abused you can reach this pain point that you you will say that's enough but if it's like if you are slow cooked like this proverbial frog uh, you it's it's like you are pretty much good the same all the time but in the end your life is like uh, without any passion, uh, without happiness. It's what uh, this Australian nurse discovered that at the end of, of life, most people have regrets of what they haven't done, uh, not what, uh, not about what, what they have done. Uh, and yeah, that's this quiet desperation that. Because we are so full of potential. Come on. Every child is a genius. We are so full of potential. We can do so much different things, but we don't even try. And this is what I meant. Just don't agree on the status quo. Try to be more. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to be more in. Just try to elevate something. Try to, try to change a, a little bit. Yeah. Like uh, Victor Frank said that we are getting the meaning, the sense of our lives just from three areas, unavoidable uh, uh, torment, like you cannot avoid it. So, for example, you are mortally ill, but you still can sen find the sense of your life in this. Love is another. And the third is work. And all the three of those categories are very human. Like everybody suffers a bit. Uh, everybody loves and want to be loved. And we all do something. So uh, it, it's not that you, you have to start the next Microsoft or get this golden medal at Olympics. Nope. It's just feeling your own purpose, your very individual uh, own thing. And I think that's that's big at this point as people start to live their life, you know, beyond retirement. They, a lot of people, start to think that they don't have a purpose anymore, that they don't have any reason to keep going, and that's why you know life just sort of stagnates. And I think, I think this is a, a really good way to just sort of remind yourself that that you do have a reason to be here. There, you know, how you find that might be uh, might be unusual. I don't know. It, it, it's hard to say how you would go about figuring it out. Maybe reading your book about finding your mission. I know that might be the might be the the way to do it. But 
do you have any suggestions for um, someone who is feeling a little bit lost or a little bit, you know, kind of dangling at loose ends? What can they do? Yeah, never stop looking. As I said, you kind of drift into, oh, 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 I've just found my life purpose. Nope, it's, it takes some reflection. It takes some pondering. Uh, it is like very individual. So uh, they are your experiences and your values, what uh, you want to be remembered for, remember it for. And also, I would say beyond retirement, come on, it's a perfect time uh, to set yourself on a mission of finding your mission. Like, okay, you don't have any other thing to do. It's a great mission to figure out, okay, what I am here for or for whom, because love is also uh, one of, of these uh, areas where, where we find our uh, purpose. So, yep. And uh, like the simplest exercise, which is on a surface quite grim, especially if you are a bit older than 33, uh, was imagining my funeral and what I want others to say about me. Okay, that's how I figured out my, my values. Uh, this is something I would like to be remembered for and uh, like simple exercise, sit down, close your eyes, imagine the funeral, people around, your friends, your family, your workmates, and listen to the conversations, listen to the eulogy and try to write your own, the, the, the perfect one which you would wish for. And this really was for me very moving and uh, it opened my eyes. Okay, if I continue how I am right now, there is no chance I will arrive at this point. So I need to change a lot. I guess, <clears throat> and there's not too many people who are going to sit down and close their eyes and imagine their funeral and having people just say, ah, yep, she was there. Yeah, she lived. And yep. and nothing yep. else. Yeah. So that yeah, that's a that's a, a it's, very it's, strong exercise. And it's not about really uh, what you achieved, but who you were. Who you are. I, I remember my mentor telling about his dad, who was just a construction worker. Uh, but when he died, like the whole town came to the funeral, the line was so long that everybody was talking about not how he fixed their homes, but how he interacted with them, how he treated yeah. them, and so on. And this is what life is really about. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, actually, I think that's a really good place to uh, to think about ending because <laughs> I don't want to talk about death anymore. But who you are and and how you live your life is is what it's all about. I think, and yeah, finding those little habits that make you live your life in a better way is the best way to be, I think. Amen. And your habits are also making you who you are. Yeah, this is how it works. Because, well, writers write. Yeah, That's why I'm a writer. I'm writing. And this is how we shape our identity and how we change who we are. And that on your website, your the little subtitle under expand beyond yourself, it says change yourself, change your life, change the world. And I think that's that's very simple but very deep it if everybody focused on changing themselves everything would be different well we can hope that's <laughs> gonna happen yes uh Michael, thank you very much for being with me today i've really enjoyed talking to you and it's given me yet another way to look at the small daily habits that we all need to be focusing on you're most welcome, Jackie. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to share my experience with your audience. And that's it for this episode of Beyond Retirement. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you ready to start rocking your retirement? Head on over to www.beyondretirement.ca forward slash rocking it and sign up to plan out your own roadmap for retirement. Don't wait till it's too late.